Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And today I have someone with me who we've been talking about this, uh, you know, back and forth for a while about having him on. He's always great in the comment section, always very encouraging, even has DM'd me and written me on social media back when I was on social media with very, very kind words. Uh, just seems like a really awesome person. And I wanted to bring him to the, the group here and, and introduce him to all of you other parasites. So everyone say hello to Bruce. Bruce, say hi to everyone and let them know where they can find you on social media, sir. Hello, everybody. This is Bruce. And um, normally I'm and I believe it's Bruce McDonald 25. And that's on, um, you said that's on Twitter or Instagram, right? Instagram. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Because I use Twitter a little bit too, but mostly Instagram. Yeah, I hear you. Instagram was always my favorite of the two as well. So Bruce, let me ask you, you know, uh, because from my perspective, I know, you know, I just started seeing your, your very kind words popping up in the comment section on some of my videos. And I'm kind of curious from your perspective, how did you come across the Venom vlog? What was one of the earlier episodes you remember that pulled you in? And, you know, uh, and why have you stuck around so long? And because I'm obviously I'm very grateful. I always love when I see people who've been commenting for three years now, and, and you're one of those people that's been commenting for a while. So, uh, so I just wanted to get that from your perspective. So people kind of know how you came across the show. Well, yeah, I mean, back whenever the first Venom movie had came out, or when they were in talks of the first Venom movie, I used to just go on YouTube and, you know, see if I could look up different things and see if anybody was talking about behind the scenes stuff or if they knew anything and then one day I just happened to come across one of your videos where you were doing the first introduction about you know the journey of you know what you were going to do as far as eating and exercising and then you know you started talking about the movie and all and after that first episode I watched you know I started tuning in and you know, I've subscribed to the channel, and every time the notifications came up, I would watch the video, and, you know, I just got hooked on it. <laughs> well, it's very kind of you, and actually, that uh, the thing about the eating and stuff, I I'm, I'm actually might bring that back next season, because uh, obviously, like, I, I fell off that uh, wagon <laughs> like a couple years ago where I was like watching what I was eating and I was trying to be healthier and then I go up and down I still do that from time to time but I rarely bring it to the show anymore but I do have people tell me that they they liked that aspect of the show early on so um and you know and I want to try to take care of myself better so I might bring yeah, that I might bring it back next season that would be pretty awesome if you did <laughs> <laughs> awesome because you know other than the venom news that was another part of you know why I liked watching the channel too, because at that time I was trying to work on, you know, eating better and trying to get in shape and everything and seeing that. And then the reference to how Eddie Brock was, you know, always working out and stuff. It kind of inspired me to want to do that too. Nice. Uh, I need to get back on that. And, uh, yeah, that was always one of my favorites was, uh, sometimes a, a Venom vlog episode for, for those who don't know, they would start off with me cooking and then, and then even like uh, getting on a scale and like weighing myself, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I do kind of miss it um, actually. And I, I want to bring that back because that was always fun. Because uh, you never know what you were like. Oh, I'm gonna turn into a new Venom vlog, and then it's like two minutes of me cooking, and people were like, "When's <laughs> when's he gonna talk about Venom?" <laughs> um, so so that's great. I mean, I, it's it's always um, it's always surprising for me to hear that, you know, I, I make any impact on people. It's But it's always like a, a, a big honor for me to, for someone to, to think of me in that way. Like, hey, you did something that inspired me to do something. And and so the, that's kind of like our background, me and you, is like our communication is that every once in a while on Instagram, I'll just get these really nice messages from you um, that I'm like, well, this guy's so nice. Like, and he's, uh, he's definitely a fan of the show and he's, um, you know, he's a... Uh, always positive which is something i try to foster on the show i mean of course i'm critical of stuff but i try not to just crap on anyone else's opinions like that's my main thing is i want everyone to feel like they're welcome and because i i really latched on to that phrase we are venom and i just was like i i don't want to 
push anyone out. I want this to be a place where anyone can come in, as long as they're respectful, come in and say their opinions. And you're one of those people that has always done that. You always are very respectful when you give your opinions. You're always encouraging um, to me and other people who comment uh, at times. And I'm curious, like, besides just Venom, like you said, you were you heard about the movie coming out and that made you go try to like look up people talking about it. Are you that big of a Venom fan where you were just like, I need Venom content. I need people talking about Venom because I like the character or is it, or was there other elements to it than that? Well, like most people, my first introduction with it was back with a cartoon. Okay. That's where I first started watching. And then, you know, I started getting the comic books whenever I was in middle school and reading up on it and I always thought that, you know, he looked like a pretty cool character and everything and I liked the whole design of him and, you know, I was just really into that type of stuff back then and then, you know, as I got older, I kind of branched away from it. You know, I kind of got back into it after a while because, you know, I go through different characters that I like and then, you know, it might roll over to somebody else the next month or so. Or... Yeah, I hear you. I I definitely fall in that category where I have a lot of favorites. So it'll be like, oh, I'm really into, you know, Venom right now. But then, like, I'll dip back into Green Lantern or I'll, then I'll dip into, you know, uh, Booster Gold or something and Nightwing. And I kind of jump all over the place. Um, is that um, the far as far as the look of Venom goes, like, uh, I, I agree with you and, I, and I'm. Uh, that's why I always try to reiterate that on the show is a lot of people got pulled in from that character just by seeing him, uh, knowing nothing about him, but just that first look, whether it was the cartoon or the comics, um, whether it was the comic version with McFarlane where he had uh, didn't have a tongue sticking out, or it was the version that Eric Larson brought later on where it had a big tongue. Like it, all those different versions of the character, he seems to always appeal. Even the movie, even though the movie didn't have the spider on his chest, there are still so many people that got pulled into that movie just by how he looked. Um, what do you think is the, in your opinion, like, oh, what, yeah, most definitely. yeah well, in your opinion, what's the magic behind his look? Like, what do you think is, is it that it's simple or is it that it's just, uh, it, it just looks badass and it just speaks to everyone on the inside who likes badass things? Well, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I think you pretty much summed it up with that. <laughs> I mean, but, but I mean, other than that, it's like just the the character itself. Because honestly, I got more into it once I started watching the Venom vlog, you know. And you would always discuss the different comics and stuff, and I started looking them up and reading, and you know, it made me more and more fascinated with every comic that I read with Venom in it, and you know, it just gave me a whole new level of respect for the character uh, that's awesome to hear i gotta say i had the same reaction like he was a character i've always liked but um doing the show had did had the same effect on me like i was like oh yeah he's the guy with the tongue and he fights spider-man that's kind of how i saw him when we started the show and then as we were reading those books i started realizing oh wow there's there's way more to this character than i i ever gave him credit for and uh and then that's when you know I noticed there are people like you who felt the same way, who grew as the show grew, like you like learned more and more about them and then read your own books and got your own opinions on them. And then there are people who knew way more about them than I did when I started the show who are now like getting excited that, you know, people like me are catching up to like the Flash Thompson stuff. They're like, oh my God, I can't wait for you to read this. And it's it's so nice to um to to be the fan that others are waiting, you know, the hardcore fans are waiting to catch up. It's it's kind of neat because I feel like a lot of times when people do shows, they typically start with something they know everything about. And uh, and I tr I tried that numerous times on my channel and it never worked. Like Transformers, uh, Resident Evil, like n not a lot of people tuned into those. But when I was growing with most of the audience that watched me with Venom, I think that's what, uh, you know, appeal, uh, I think is an appeal to my show. But um but it's, it's also a way for me to connect to people. And I like being on the same level as everyone. Again, like when I heard them chant that phrase uh, like three years ago in November, or it was, maybe it was December, they were at Brazil Comic Con, and the whole audience said, 
kept cheering, we are Venom, we are Venom. And I put it in my intro to my shows a lot of times because I never want to forget that I like being on the same level as everybody else. I don't like uh, being put on a pedestal. I don't like being treated differently. I like all of us being on the same level and you know growing in some way together. And, uh, and I, that's, I think, what appeals to me about you know people like you who comment so positively like what what is what is it in your everyday life that um that you that that keeps you positive that uh that you know that because you i i don't think i've ever seen anything negative from you ever on my channel and i i love that about you so i'm just kind of curious like how do you try to stay positive in your daily life and um and you know, what makes it feel so good to encourage other people the way you do? Well, I mean, I always try to stay on the optimistic side of things because of the way that, you know, things were for me when I was growing up, you know, because I didn't really have a lot of people that treated me in that regard or anything. So I always made it a point. So whenever I meet people to try to, you know, be respectful towards them and, you know, not come across as a, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, overall, just try to treat people with respect. That's, it's, that's good to hear. I mean, it, it's a, a good thing to, um, to practice that. And I know what you mean. It's like, it's hard to find exactly the word for like, you know, you don't want to seem entitled or arrogant. Like there's so many words that you just don't, you know, you don't want to associate yourself with those words because like you said, it can put up uh, a wall between you and other people. And, uh, and I think so many of us do that nowadays. We forget that, um, that there was a time where people at least had enough respect, uh, to, to be civil and treat each other nicely. I mean, it's not always, of course, humanity has always been flawed and has always hurt each other since the beginning of time. But, uh, but the, the point is to, to move past our, our, you know, what we're drawn to do, like treat each other like garbage and work harder to be better toward each other. So yeah, when I see your comments and there's a couple other people on that, that comment and they're always pot like lonely symbiote, like so many people that are just always super positive and it, it just, you helped me, uh, you lonely symbiote, other people like all of you who comment like that, you helped me want to make the environment of the Venom vlog positive. Like, cause at first I think, you know, I swore sometimes and I kind of was like in the earlier episodes, I kind of didn't have a that kind of regard for where I was going to go with the show because I thought like most shows I did, it would just no one would watch it and I would give up on it. But I, I'm so glad yeah. to, I'm so glad to still be here 575 episodes later and with spinoff shows now like Par like this show, Parasite Podcast. So, you know, are there as a fan of the show and, and someone who watches a, view, a viewer, I, I don't like to use the word fan, but as a viewer of the show. Is there are there things you would like to see me do? I mean, obviously you mentioned uh, maybe coming back to the the food and the working out thing, and I'm probably going to bring that back next season because we're going to talk about Eddie Brock again, and the movie will be coming out, so I'll probably do that next season. But besides that, are there any things that you um you know you're that you're interested in that you'd like to see folded into the show, or any ideas that you'd like to see done on the show? I'm um, I'm just kind of curious because I love asking that to pe from people and seeing how and other ways I can grow basically. I did like whenever, you know, you started off showing off, like, your art and stuff, like, for, because I think you were doing it for Patreon at first, and, you know, <clears throat> I was always interested in seeing the different things that, you know, you can draw and create, and I figured that, you know, maybe that could be a part of the show where, you know, you can get a vote on what everybody wants you to draw for a particular episode or, you know, and whichever one gets the highest vote, you know, that's something that you could do. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, sadly for me, the, so drawing isn't, is definitely not easy for me. Um, it's, uh, it's something I used to be able to do before my aneurysm. And it's something that's much harder to do after my aneurysm rupture. So, um, mm -hmm. so it can take a lot out of me. So as far as doing it live, that would be really difficult, yeah. really difficult for me to do. But, um, I did, I, I talked to someone else about this, about, um, cause people always say like, oh, you know, you should make like a t-shirt or something like that. And we, I tried that before, but 
I'm, I'm not very good, you know, like uh, sitting down, buckling down and trying to come up with a design. So what usually what I do is I try to pay artists to like draw something for the channel. And I'm actually working on something right now uh, with a, a, a very talented young artist. And she's uh, she's coming up with something for the channel that represents all, you know, hopefully all of you guys as parasites um, in a in a positive way, I hope. And I'll be unveiling that soon. But we were thinking about maybe making um, T-shirts on that. But I, I don't know if I could. She lives here in Orlando, so I don't know if I could ever do an art session with her because I would probably want to do something like that where now I live in Orlando and there's there are artists there's a great art community here for comic book artists and I was thinking since I can't do those things maybe I can commission an artist to draw something and then I'll go record it and then we'll get those videos so you still get art but it just won't always be from me I don't know what do you think of that hey that sounds pretty cool <laughs> awesome so let me let me get back to you too like um you know, as far as you said, like you were watching the show and uh, and it made you go check out some Venom comics. What are some Venom comics that you've read that are among your favorite, like that you really just resonated with and liked? And then, you know, maybe name one or two that you just have you haven't really enjoyed too, too much. I would have to say the main one that I've really gravitated towards most was the Lethal Protector okay. <clears throat> series whenever with that nice yeah that's a classic one because that was yeah and then i also had read the planet of the symbiotes and that was pretty interesting too yeah what'd you think of the art in that book because that that's a uh, uh, saint pierre i think drew that one in some issues and it's uh it's it's pretty crazy the anatomy of people is, is really awesome oh yeah i was definitely digging the art in there <clears throat> I mean, because I always like the switch up of the styles from, you know, one comic to the next where, you know, if somebody has a different style or a different take on how they draw Venom or the other characters and, you know, the colors and stuff that they use. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's always great to see uh, I mean, an, an interpretation a change, like, as the book goes on. So, so after Lethal Protector and Planet, were you, like, did you kind of grab onto all the miniseries from the 90s that they reprinted recently because uh because every one of those i think changes artists yeah every chance that i would get you know like go on amazon i mean kindle <clears throat> i would always go on there and look up different comics and see if i could find you know everyone that i could possibly come across and i found a few of them on there and read them from there um and what what about um one that you maybe a story that didn't resonate with you too much. Was there any out there that um, didn't click with you, and, and any reasons why? Honestly, I've always enjoyed all of them, you know, <laughs> because it's like different interpretations, and you know, I've, I've always been the kind of person that likes, you know, the change up of things, you know, long as it's something that stays in the realm of, you know the basic character and everything you know <clears throat> sure because you know like i said i'm still reading more and more about venom and stuff so you know there could possibly be comics that i might come across that you know i don't favor as much as the other ones that i have read but so far i've pretty much enjoyed all of them <laughs> that's awesome and uh you said um you know sticking to the, the core of the character what is uh, what are some attributes of eddie and and maybe even the symbiote or venom together like what are some attributes of those characters that that do resonate with you that you like um and that you you know kind of makes you want to come back for more eddie brock stories well i mean in certain ways i can relate to eddie brock whereas you know wanting people to you know think highly of you or look at you in a positive light because you know whenever I was growing up, I was similar to that. You know, I would have to go and do things as a child to gain favor for my friends or people that I wanted to be my friends in order to, you know, be able to hang out with them. But then I later realized that that was something that I didn't really need to do because, you know, they still didn't really hang with me, I guess you could say. That's a, it's a shame to hear, uh, you know, but but I understand it too. Um, like I I grew up in a military family and we moved around so much, so making friends was 
really tough for me as a kid. And I remember my uh, one of my first best friends was a guy named Terrence in Florida. I mean, in uh, Mississippi. And then when I moved to Florida, there was a kid named Danny. Um, and Danny was from, uh, I think he was from the Philippines. And he was the other kid in class that nobody talked to. It was like me and him. So one day I just went over and started talking to him and turned out he was a big comic book fan. And then we hit it off immediately as, as both fans of the X-Men. Um, and there is something about that, uh, about, you know, it's like I, we all, I think, on some level do look for that acceptance. Even as adults, we're just like, hey, you don't have to love me or praise me, but I just don't want you to, you know, look at me and think negative things. I, th I think deep down Eddie yeah. does does want that and I think a lot of us do too and um, you know it's a shame because like like you are you know if I don't, if you don't mind me gushing about you like you're from what I know about you so far like you're a fantastic person you're you're always like you said optimistic you're you're you keep in the positive um, like even just now I couldn't even get you to say a negative about a venom book you're like no I liked all the ones I've read <laughs> you know like you're 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 really awesome genuine person that you know that i just i took note of you right away and i remember i first asked you i was like hey would you like to do a parasite podcast you were like nervous you're like oh, i don't know i don't know if i can do it and 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 you're not the first person that, like lonely symbiote had that reaction and a lot of people do but um i'm so glad that you and lonely and you know the other people that were nervous you know at least trusted me enough to like you know you'd be like hey because all we're doing we're really just having a conversation and, and that's what i wanted I, I didn't want these to feel like interviews per se but just more like two fans talking about stuff and getting to know each other and that's kind of the whole crux of this show and um and i'm glad you're you're on it man i'm glad we get to talk about these things and uh, and i i'm with you I, I i still at times in my life uh want people to not look at me and see like the hunchback of notre dame you know like i i want them to i want them to see what's on the inside and, and uh you know and for, in Eddie's case, what I like is that sometimes what's on his inside is it means well, but he it, it struggles, and I think a lot of us are like that too. So it's it's a that's a yeah it's a good quality. I think it's a lot of people connect with that. And is there are there any other qualities about Eddie? Because um, now he's like a dad. There's like so many other things about him now, and he's definitely more altruistic and more heroic now. And he make he tries to make selfless decisions now. Is that a growth that you like seeing in the character? Most definitely, because, you know, I'm a dad myself, so as a father, you know, I can understand how he feels when it comes to, you know, wanting to protect his son and trying to, you know, do everything he can to represent a positive example for him, you know. Yeah, I I think in comics it, it's, it's really easy to give, like, um, you know, like, oh, let's give Spider-Man a, a daughter. They did that at one point. And then, like, um, Batman, they're like, let's give him a son who, like, is a killer. <laughs> and Batman has to, like, kind of tame him. And, and uh, Superman, let's give Superman a kid, which is fun because it's, like, Superman, it seems like he's built to be a great dad. And Batman is built to, to struggle at it. Um, but yet Batman has trained, like, five Robins and a Batgirl throughout his time. So he actually isn't that bad of a father figure. Eddie is neat because... I think because so many people can relate to him on a on a human level, it's neat seeing him be a dad. Actually, I think that's one of the best things that Donny Cates has added to this run is that Eddie Brock being a father is is great for the character. It, it shows real growth for him, and it's causing him to have to fundamentally change every decision he makes. Now he makes for two people, and and uh, and before it was never like he he made decisions based on him in the suit, sure. But this is way different, and uh, and I really love that, and I'm I'm glad to hear you connect with that, and that you're you're a father who sees the the value in that storytelling too, which is which is awesome. So, is there anything moving forward uh, that you would like to see Venom grow towards, like Eddie Brock grow towards? Because I personally like to see him become president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be pretty awesome to see there. <laughs> uh, I can just imagine. <laughs> Would you would you vote for a a, a Brock a Venom, a Venom as the vice president and Brock as the the president uh, scenario? Oh yeah, I'd be front line and center for that. <laughs> 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 uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, 
But yeah, going forward, I would, you know, definitely like to see him continue to grow and, you know, see what other challenges he's met with. And, you know, there's always so many possibilities, I guess you could say. It's, it's true. I mean, it's comic book characters tend to be in this, like we always talk about the hamster wheel um, that, that a lot of real people end up in, which is you just keep repeating the same things over and over. Eddie seems to be one of those characters that can occasionally jump off his hamster wheel, which is really rare in comics. And I, I just hope that as long as that keeps happening to the character, um, I think that'll be good for him. And uh, and I, I look forward to seeing you know what developments come with, with that character. I mean, I heard there's going to be a big change for him coming up soon after King and Black and you know as as much as they that's probably just hype and you know but I'm still interested to check it out because there's a, a possibility that it could actually be a real new direction for the character and I'm always down to see that happen you know that's why I'm interested to see you know if they continue on with the movies and everything what they might incorporate from the comics you know into the movies that's true and, and speaking of the movie um you know, obviously you said you kind of ended up finding me through, you know, the mo- the news of the movie existing is uh, outside of the comics because we talked – I know we talked some about that. And let's focus on the movie here and, like, what were your kind of thoughts on the movie and um, and where do you kind of hope the the second movie is, you know, goes from here? Like, you know, what are kind of your hopes for that? Well, I mean, I know whenever I – seen the first look of Venom on there, you know, I was a little, you know, kind of like most people, you had to take some getting used to, you know, because everybody is used to the version where he has the symbol and all that and the origin story and all. But then once I actually saw the movie and seen the tape that they had on the, you know, origin of the Eddie Brock obtaining the symbiote, you know, I found it fascinating, you know. I didn't mind the change up with it because, you know, just like you always said, you didn't need Spider Man in order to get Eddie and Venom merged together or, you know, you didn't need that backstory in order to tell the story, I guess you could say. Yeah, that was uh, something that was a revelation to me when I was starting the show. And I was like, yeah, of course you need Spider-Man. And then I reread the origin and I go, oh, well, if you just look at the basics of the story, it's a guy who gets screwed over by somebody else and he blames them for all of his problems. I go, yeah, you can do that without Spider-Man. And once I figured that out, I was like, oh, I guess you don't really need him. Which, you know, a lot of people, especially at that time, and some people still now, they don't like hearing me say that. They're like, you need Spider-Man, you need everything. And I'm like, well, not if you can't use Spider-Man, then there are ways to come up with not using him. I guess that's a better way uh, to, to phrase it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm excited. Like, I, the movie, you know, was, it, you know, of course it, it, ta- it does take getting used to. And there were a lot of people that were skeptical of it. That first teaser really didn't give us too much, just kind of set the tone. But even then, it didn't set a perfect tone because when we saw the final product, I was like, wow, that did not actually match the tone of that first trailer too much. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's very fun. My favorite thing on the show, too, talking about is, um, and you've commented on this before, is is the like how things are made, like how movies are made, what departments. And I think you commented on one video, you were like, oh, I didn't even know this existed in filmmaking i think you said um it are those things that uh have any of those videos like kind of opened your eyes or any videos you can think of that opened your eyes to how much hard work goes into a movie uh, even movies that people don't like um is has there been anything like that or is that stuff you kind of knew before for the most part well i mean i only knew like a portion of you know, some of the stuff that goes on behind movies because I would always look at the special stuff like that. Oh, yeah, okay. By movies and, you know, to hear you talk about it and, you know, kind of give a breakdown of it all, it was like a whole new perspective of it. Yeah, movies are, uh, they're the closest thing to an actual machine involving people that I can think of outside of, like, you know, a shop that, sits around and makes shoes and watches with people by hand you know it's like uh it's it's really intricate 
and it's also chaotic and it's like so it's like this planned chaos it's like all right here's our schedule and here's what we got to do but but things can go all over the place and things can go wrong at any second and it's a uh, it's very unpredictable. So to, to pull together and finish a movie, let alone finish a movie that a lot of people like, like more people like than dislike, it's very rare. It's very hard to do. Um, and uh, and it's sometimes even for me, as someone who's worked on these sets, it's hard to be critical of things because I know the hard work that specifically goes into it sometimes. Um, but I also have to remind myself like, well, I still have a, a brain and I want it to be critical of everything at times you know i don't want to be critical just for the sake of being critical uh, but if something doesn't make sense to me i want to explain why it doesn't and then my hope though is that i do that and this has happened sometimes where i'll say like oh i, I don't know why they did this this doesn't make sense and it doesn't work for me and then someone in the comments will go well here's my perspective on it and they'll explain it and i go wow like even with my years of experience on a movie set or or you know or reviewing comics or editing comics or whatever writing stuff writing scripts it's still you need that outside perspective and uh it, it feels good to get it so uh so i love that i mean i love that about the comments in the in the comment section and, and um i love that you had that reaction to where you're like hey i i got to learn a little bit more about you know extras and what they do and what their work days like or what what happens in post-production and stuff like that it's 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 good to hear comments like that because i those videos in particular i work a little bit extra harder on as far as pulling information together and researching stuff um but so outside the movies, and we talked about the movie, the comic book. Like, are there other things of Venom that, or that have Venom in them that you've that you've checked out? Like, have you checked out any novels that have Venom in them? Because I know they did a Lethal Protector novel. Do have you bought any like little statues or things to put on your work desk? Uh, do you have any? Have you you and your uh, uh, kids played a video game with Venom in it? Like, I'm just kind of curious if you have you branched out and checked out other Venom things in other media. Well, I haven't had the opportunity to read any of the novels or anything, but I have collected a few Venom statues and stuff. Awesome. Well, which ones? Uh, which ones do you have so far? Well, I have um, because I know I got one from Kota Bakia where he's crouched down like he's in a football tackling stance or something like that that's the best way i can describe it i have that one and then i have one where the symbiote is trying to separate from him because i think you have the same one too where it's partially on his body and then you can still see oh uh, yeah everything. was that is that was that the 50 dollar one the um the vinyl P pvc one um mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's awesome. I think uh, Diamond Diamond Distributions or Diamond Select makes those. I love those fifty dollars statues. They're they're so great because I've dropped a few of them and they haven't broke because they're made of like vinyl and PVC. And I'm like, oh, I love you because I used to collect uh, when they first came out. Batman had statues called Batman Black and White, um, and each one was based on a different artist interpretation of Batman. And there was like six of them in the first like year that they came out. And I owned all six, and I moved to California. I built a shelf, put it on the wall, um, fastened it, I thought, really well, uh, put all the statues up there, and then like a month later, an earthquake came, and they came right off that shelf and smashed on the ground. <laughs> oh, man. So, so I never bought another statue after that uh, unless it was made of PVC. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's cool. So you got those two statues. I love the Koto Bakia one. I think I know which one you're talking about. Um, but have you like, because um, I know they release like the the action figures stuff like that. Do you do you just like sticking to, um, you know, to the statues? Because I personally, I if I had the money, I would just buy statues of Venom all the time and and just skip the action figures. But I just I don't have the money. But they're oh, so beautiful oh, looking. Oh yeah, I've, um. I have a few action figures too because I have like uh, anti venom mm -hmm. and I still have one of my venom toys that I had from back in 2000 or something like that one of the earlier ones awesome okay so yeah that's that was fun too for me is like I I looked through my closet and I found some old venom toys and I was like when I was starting the show and I go oh 
cool, I can put these in the background and have some Venom stuff. And now, like, I, I can make my whole apartment Venom if I wanted to, which is, which is good and bad, I'm sure. <laughs> um but uh but no i that's that's awesome i'm glad you're you know you collect some things and do your do your kids like are, like or or kid i don't know how, how many you have but are are they um do they get into comic books at all or is this something that you kind of just do yourself and they kind of do their own thing yeah it's just something i really do because they're not really into it as much or at least not now anyway but sure. <laughs> you know it's kind of like my own thing Oh, that's cool. And uh, like you said, in time, they might, you know, um, end up in that world. You know, you never know. Um, every time they release a new movie or a new, you know, TV show or whatever, like it's another opportunity, um, you know, to bring in new fans. We were talking about the other day about Ven uh, Spider-Man cartoons. And, and we were wondering if this this current one, Maximum Venom, is like the finale of the show. And if not, you know, or if it's going to be more. And I was thinking, you know, it's been a long time. We've gotten a ton of different Spider-Man shows. I, I really hope that Sony hits us. With that movie being such a success, I would love for them to do a Venom animated series <laughs> with without Spider-Man oh, yeah. um, and do something that could pull in like five to ten-year-olds uh, and introduce them to Venom. I mean, obviously, Maxim Venom probably just did that. But going off of the success of that, I'm hoping... They just go screw it. We're just doing a, an Eddie Brock Venom show, and I would love that more than anything. And I'm I'm kind of curious. Would you like that, or would you like um, would you like it to involve Spider-Man to some degree, or would you like it to be about Flash Thompson? It'd be about an Agent Venom show. Like, if you could get a Venom series, whether it be cartoon or live action, you know, what would you hope it would focus on? Well, I mean, considering now that we have the Eddie Brock version, you know, in the movies and all, it would. It would be interesting to see a live action take with Flash Thompson, you know, with the Agent Venom, because you know that was another comic book series that I got into with the movie coming out back then. You know, I started reading up on the Agent Venom and the Space Knight, Venom Space Knight. Yeah, that's uh, that would be awesome. I, um, I haven't got to the Space Knight stuff yet. I mean, I, obviously, I know that stuff exists but at reading it this season and going through flash's stuff like my next episode about flash will be about his time as a member of the secret avengers and uh i'm i really love what they're doing with that character in that run and i can't wait to see where it goes from there because i'm really attached to him <laughs> like i i turned out i grew up in a military family and stuff so i understand i've always understood flash thompson uh, he grew up in a broken home of, of child abuse he um and, and alcohol and um, emotionally distant parents and uh, he you know he had the opposite upbringing of Peter Parker but yet still has a heart that uh, that could match someone like a Peter Parker and I've always liked that about Flash Thompson so reading that book is fun and you're right doing a, a live action show or a cartoon whatever it is I would watch every episode of course I would but I, I would love that so much oh yeah <laughs> um, yeah because um, Flash he's another character you know besides Eddie that you know if you went based on the cartoon from the 90s you know you would only just have that one-sided version of it or you know outlook of it but then once I started reading the comics and you know seeing more depth to the character compared to the cartoons and everything you know it was like I really started getting into it more and more my favorite thing to hear is when people even if I disagree with them on their opinion, uh, but my favorite thing is is to hear people say, "Oh, I I tried out this comic book, and this is what I loved about it." You know, and it's because when my mom tells me she's like, you know, ever since you were a kid, all you wanted was other people to like comic books, because that was one of the things you got made fun of was well, like sometimes my looks, but then also, um, you know, we didn't have a ton of money, like we weren't, you know broke broke but we didn't have a ton of money and and so like i had a lot of hand-me-down clothes and stuff and um and so like i would get teased for those things but really i was like i didn't care as if i found someone even if they bullied me if i found out that they liked spider-man or the x-men or they watched the batman cartoon i would try to go up and be their friend and my mom's like that's all you ever wanted so like when people now say oh i love I, I read this comic it was my first one i checked it out it, it's 
it's just the coolest thing in the world to hear for me. And that's why when these movies are successful, like the Marvel ones or the DC ones, like whatever it is, even if I disagree with their opinions, if they love it, that's just somehow it's music to my ears. It's like listening to a really good song. Um, and, uh, and it's, so it's great hearing you have that reaction too. And, and I'm curious before we go, like, is there any last things about, you know, Venom that you'd like to talk about? Any last topics that you want to just kind of share your opinion on? And, um, you know, I, I would just love to hear it before we, before we head out for the day. Well, I mean, I'm definitely anxious to, you know, see what comes about with the sequel and everything, because I know with everything that was going on with, you know, the COVID and that kind of put a halt to things. And, you know, it still has me a little anxious to see what's going to, as far as that, with Andy Serkis directing and, you know, Woody Harrelson playing Carnage. It's like, I'm just ready to see, the, you know, because there's just so many different theories and ideas in my mind <laughs> in regards to what could happen or what may happen or what probably won't happen. But, you know, just, just still eagerly and patiently waiting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, What's the number one thing you hope that they get right in, in Venom, Let There Be Carnage? Well, most definitely, I hope they get the look of Carnage right, you know, because and a lot of people have talked about, you know, hoping that they nail as far as his look and everything goes, because, you know, even though Venom didn't have the Spider-Man symbol, I still feel like they nailed his look you know, and that was a pretty awesome design that they came up with. So I'm curious to see if that's going to be the case with Carnage whenever that happens. Yeah, I would say I think the the success of this movie is definitely going to rest on how cool Carnage looks in that first trailer. Um, f first impressions are everything, and the movie's called Let There Be Carnage, and it's the it's the main selling point for this movie. I mean, they've been wanting ever since they've been wanting to do a Venom movie. All the other versions of the scripts, even the one they filmed, originally there was going to be some version of Carnage. Now that he's being set up for the sequel and they built that ant anticipation, which I think was smart of them, uh, to not blow their Carnage wad in the first movie. But now they get it in their second movie and uh, like you said, I think most people just want to see how he looks. And if he looks like he could you know, cut you in half and laugh while he's doing it, I think people are going to line up in droves to see that movie. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely be one of them lined up to see you, too. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you and me both. Um, and, uh, you know, and so, Bruce, I want to say thank you, uh, first and foremost, for supporting the show, for always watching, for always commenting about stuff. I mean, I know you don't comment on every video, but when you do, it's always very supportive. It's very encouraging. Um, your DMs, I miss them. You know, I'm sorry I'm not on social media anymore. I do miss them, but some from time to time you'll still email me, which is really nice. And um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you and your family are safe. And it means the world to me to be a friend of yours now. And uh, and I hope to maybe someday after I go through a cycle of um, of these shows, maybe I'll do like 30 or 40 of them. My plan is to then go back and do a, a follow up with everyone who's been on the show before. So definitely at some point we'll have you back on maybe after the second movie comes out, and I'll bring some of you guys on to do like. Um, five to ten minute reviews and I'll, I'll cut together a bunch of fun episodes using that you know footage hey i'm down for that <laughs> <laughs> awesome well bruce obviously will be in touch but everyone out there please follow bruce uh bruce what's your instagram again sir uh it's bruce mcdonald 25 awesome so you guys look him up um very awesome person uh just a great guy always positive and uh Sir, I, I again, I can't thank you enough for your time. Thank you for being here today. Oh, I appreciate it, man. And I definitely thank you for allowing me to be on your show. <laughs> um, hey. We... I know you don't like to hear it all the time, but like I always tell you, I'm definitely a big fan of yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm funny with that word, but it's, uh, but we can definitely be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely be friends, and, and I, I love that we're, we are, and... Um, and I love your positivity and, and never lose sight of that. Always keep that optimism for me, okay? Thank you, man. 
you're welcome. And everybody else out there, like I said, follow Bruce on Instagram. I'll put a link to it down below so you can check that out. And definitely come back for more Parasite Podcasts. I'll have uh, some more recordings coming up soon. So make sure you, if you like this episode, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Follow Bruce and uh, come back to the show when we have more episodes posted up. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.